All right, Lana. What the hell? You hit the fact your sister murdered that guy? What the fuck, bitch? What's wrong with you? Oh, yeah, Edgeworth. Sorry, Edgeworth. Uh, I didn't mean to get you in trouble. Hmm. Don't worry about it. This is my problem, not yours. Oh, I'm not interrupting anything, pals! Really? You came in to interrupt us again? Oh, I uh, guess I am. I'll go back later. No, wait, get back here, man! Wait, the go to. What is it? Stop running out just because you're embarrassed. You got a long nerve, pal! Maybe you're a detective run all around while on duty? And dom it all if you call me here! I'm just having people at funerals! I think Alana's having you run errands again. I was gonna say, it seemed a little familiar. Let me tell you, this is the last time, pal! Here, she asked me to give this to you if there is a break in today's trial. Evidence law? Edgeworth was talking about this, about this just the other day. That's right. You must know the two rules of evidence law. Rule one, no evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. Is that right, Mr. Wright? It seems so. And we study some evidence law, really? Yeah, I remember that now. <laughs> the chief prosecutor also wanted me to give you a message. A message? She said, if you're planning to take him on, you're going to need this book. Him? I guess I'll need to give this book a thorough read. I should probably do that now while I'm thinking about it. Doesn't look like that book will do you any good now, though. I don't know about that. Let me just see what it says. It explains the two rules of evidence law. So the rules were submitting evidence. Rule 1. No evidence shall be shown without the approval of the police department. And Rule 2. Unregistered evidence presented must be relevant to the case on trial. Alright, that's good to know. All that's left now is the chief prosecutor's sentence! That's where you're wrong, detective. Huh? Haven't you figured it out yet? While well, I'm still sitting in that prosecutor's seat, despite all these allegations being thrown at me, Mr. Edgeworth, the real trial today hasn't begun yet. What? What else is there left to do? Your credibility's been all but ruined with this forged evidence you were unaware of. I was sky battle she will literally caused a man's death. And now you're telling me you want to do more? You've got to be kidding me, pal! You're missing the point, detective. Lana didn't murder Detective Goodman. She merely st stuck a knife into his dead body. That means the real killer is still out there. What? And we're going to expose him. No matter what it takes. This case has to hurt, hurt too many people. It's time to bring it to an end. So let's finish this off. Well, I want to say this is the finale. You'd be surprised how long this, court, this trial gets dragged on for. But whatever, let's get down to business, shall we? I will never reconvene for the trial of Miss Lola Sky, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. The inquiry committee is planning to impose harsh penalties for your actions. Thank you for the news, Your Honor. Yes, well, ahem. <coughs> Normally, this is where the prosecution calls for the witness, but, er, ahem. <coughs> it's such an easy to say, uh, see, there is some concern that you, Mr. Edgeworth, may have, uh, struck a bargain. Oh, God. You think I may have manipulated the witnesses? I didn't say that! Uh, it's just, you see, uh, uh, everyone's been talking to... Uh... Very well, Your Honor. I have a solution. A solution? That being the case, the prosecution will allow the defense to call forth all further witnesses. What? Well, there's no precedent for what you're proposing! A denial is an unusual arrangement, but a very effective one. It would prove that I haven't struck any deals with the witnesses. Well, Mr. Wright, uh, what do you say? Unbelievable. Uh, Edgeworth has found a way to continue the trial. Damn. Very well. The defense accepts the prosecution's proposal. Then it's settled. The uh, defense may now call forth the witness witness. Mr. Wright. Oh, yeah? You do realize this is your last chance. If you call the wrong witness, this trial is as good as over. Right, the defense calls. Time's finally come to bring out the real murderer! Megans! Nope, we're going for God. He's 65? Oh my god. Well, we better do it. Let's do this, bitch! Damon Gaunt! The defense calls Damon Gaunt to the stand. D Damon Gaunt? What does he have to do with anything? As the defendant's partner two years ago, Mr. Gaunt has first-hand knowledge of the crime. I feel we should hear what he has to say about it. Hmm. As luck would have it, he should still be in the courthouse. He would also be the least likely to have been manipulated by me in any way. Wouldn't you agree, Your Honor? Hmm, true. All right, bailiff, please escort Mr. Gaunt to the stand. 
Well, this could look really bad for me if I fuck this up. Witness, please state your name and occupation. What is this, some kind of practical joke? I was just on my way to lunch. Your name and occupation, sir. Worthy, are you sure you want to do this? Your name and occupation. You heard him. So, you want to play hardball, eh? But please, Mr. Gaunt. Fine. My name is David Gaunt. I'm the acting chief of police. Now then, Chief Gaunt. The court requests to hear your testimony. Oh, righto. What's in that grim face? First, let's clear up this SL9 incident. Oh, you mean that time when Lana's of sister murdered that prosecutor? First, I think it's been made pretty clear already. But there's still your viewpoint. There's still some things unaccounted for. Oh? Like what? Like the role you played in all of this. Yeah. Son, either you're very brave or very foolish. Hmm. You are aware, of course, that police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal? Weapons? Sure. Take my testimony, for example. I don't have to give it if I don't want to. What? Is that true? I'm afraid so. The chief of police has the right to refuse to testify. Of course, such an action carries with it certain risks. Don't worry, I'm not here to hinder your trial. Just remember, if this turns out to be a big waste of time, don't say I didn't warn you. Very well, the witness we don't begin his testimony. Oh boy. This is gonna be fun. Oh boy. As I recall, Neil and I were questioning him that day. To make a long story short, we slipped up. That power outage didn't help either. And it didn't. When I went to my office, I found a lot of there. Apparently she had already arranged the crime scene. As you can see, I had nothing to do with the forgery. So you're claiming she did it, huh? Hmm, is that where Dark was arrested? Him? He was lying on the floor unconscious. Oh, right. After Neil supposedly got pushed by Emma onto that sword by the night. When Emma sent Neil flying, it seems Dra Dark had bumped his head. Ah, uh, I'm sure you. Everything seems pretty clear cut. If the police chief has the right to refuse to testify, then I'd better hit him hard and fast. I better get him to say stuff before he realizes what I'm up to. But let's get down to business now. Let's see what happened as the escape happened. So the two of you ran immediately after him, right? That's right, but Doc made it to the elevator first. So Neil and I split up. He went upstairs and I went downstairs. I guess you could say, he got lucky. That's kind of dark. What's this about a power outage? Oh, that. The elevator stopped all of a sudden and I got the shock of my life. Well, probably not as shocked as Neil when he was when that knife went through his heart, though. Wow, that's not funny. He's got a really weird personality when it comes to that. So you claim you found Lana there. I mean, tell us what you saw. It was a shocking sight. Neil and that serial killer were lying in a heap on the floor, all tangled together. Dark was also lying collapsed on the floor? Yes, apparently he hit his head when it was knocked out. Hmm, next to them were those two poor girls. Lana and Emma. Lana was cradling Emma in her arms. Looking back at it now, she must have already known what her sister had done. Mm. Something makes me feel like he's trying to pin something on her. How can you know that? Because of the victim's body. It had already been moved. So that means... You found the body near Lana's desk? That's right! I think you said earlier, it was my suit of armor that really stabbed the prosecutor? Yeah, I did say that. Yes. Anyway... Hmm... Hold it! Nothing to do with the forgery, you say? So you're saying that the forgery had already been taking place by the time you arrived at your office? That's exactly what I'm saying! I can understand how Lana must have felt, but moving a body and hiding evidence are inexcusable no matter what the circumstances. Is that how it really went down? Staring at the witness won't do you any good, Mr. Wright. What now? If you're going to stare at anything, you'd be better off staring at the court record. Worthy, worthy! Always the smooth talker! Hmm, but which piece of evidence today ties Gaunt to the forgery? Oh, right! Lana did admit to forging evidence, 
But that can't be the whole truth. Somehow I've got to link on to the incident. And well, I believe it has to do with what was in his locker that day. It was found in Gaunt's safe, so... Objection. That means he definitely had something to do with it. You claim he had nothing to do with the forgery. But I'm afraid that is a claim you cannot back up. Explain yourself. Several pieces of evidence were found in your office. Take this jar, for example. Most of the you showed us earlier. A piece of this jar was discovered in your safe. Uh-oh. Not only that, but the evidence list I presented earlier was actually found inside your desk. It was found where? You see, Chief Gaunt, these articles of evidence uncovered in your office are both concrete proof that you absolutely you also played a part in the illegal investigation. Good, we've officially tied him in somehow. Chief Gaunt, to most the meaning of this. Oh, he is an offense attorney who may even rival Worthy. So you admit to it then, that you were involved in the forgery? Who, oh, me? What do you mean, you? Me? Uh, why would I have anything to do with that? Well, you were the one who stuck into my office when you found this evidence. All right. Prosecutors aren't the only ones capable of forging evidence, you know. Defense attorneys can do so too. Isn't that right, Toronto? So you're claiming I forged it, huh? However, Detective Gumshoe was present during the investigation. Worthy, my boy. Not even detectives are exempt from the law. Rest assured, Dick will receive his due punishment. Punish that dick. What? If that dumps you salary drops any further, he'll end up paying the work. <laughs> yes, well, in light of the, the detective's presence, uh, please give us your testimony regarding these pieces of evidence found in your office in the relation to the forgery that took place in the crime scene. My, my. Kids these days no longer know how to put those put two and two together. You have to explain it loud and clear for the citizens. It's your duty as the chief of police, I would think. Well, let's see, what was it now? A jar of fragments and a list? For I know you could have planted them in my office. Anyway, you can't prove when those pieces of evidence were discovered. If they were found after Dark was convicted, then they're worthless. There's no reason I participated in a forgery. Rearranging the crime scene wouldn't help me out in any way. So you say. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor? When I investigated the crime scene, you should have been more careful to observe protocol. You do understand that I'm the chief of police, right? There will be consequences. Uh, indeed, I believe I'll press charges, so you won't make the same mistake again. My apologies, Chief, but would you mind waiting until tomorrow for that? Today is, uh, well, you know. All right, Edgy. In return, though. I know, I know, that place, right? Huh? What are these guys, telepathic? I guess they eat lunch together. Makes sense to me. Anyway, let's keep moving on guards. Hmm. Now I'm trying to get rid of these accusations against myself. I'd appreciate it if you'd stop making these ridiculous allocations. Yes, you do have a point. You wouldn't have the guts to do something like that. What? I'll have you know back in the day I once broke into a cattle ranch and tip. But Mr. Wright, what are you saying? Anyway, you can't prove you didn't carry the evidence, can you? You have proof to the contrary. You're going to need it later. Later? What are you talking about? What else? I'm talking about when Righto's prints are found. Yes, if they're found inside my safe, they would prove his investigation was illegal. Sadder. I've never faced anyone as slimy as this guy. He is a chief of police. He's definitely got some tricks up his sleeve. Hold it. He definitely does. What do you mean by that? This is all purely hypothetical, of course. But suppose I did place those items in my safe. Such an act wouldn't necessarily constitute forgery. Although, if concealing evidence found at a crime scene isn't forgery... I'm not through speaking yet, Righto. It all depends on when the evidence was discovered. I guess that's true. After his case, they would be completely irrelevant. Are you saying this jar fragment wasn't discovered in the initial investigation? It would appear not. After all, it wasn't listed in the evidence list. For all we know, it could have suddenly materialized the day after Doc was sentenced. Objection. That sounds like a bunch of baloney. Oh, and wouldn't that be convenient? Right. What? The Chief is talking about a possibility. So long as you can't rule that out, 
His remarks, however clever they may be, will always succeed in wasting time. Ah, tell me something I don't know! Come on, uh, come now, Raito! Think about it! No reason to participate in forgery. So you say. Why don't you look me in the eye and say that? Because I'm innocent. So you say. Remember, who was it that murdered Neil? I'm not sure I care for the word murder here, but in the other person responsible for Marshall's unfortunate demise, was ever Sky. Well, now do you see? Well, I see now, huh? The ranger wouldn't help you in any way, huh? Really, Chief Gaunt? At the very least, there's one very large benefit you've reaped from all this. Oh? I wasn't aware. What is this benefit? That would, of course, be the position you have. Chief of Police. Oh! The resolution of the SL9 incident secured a promotion to Chief. That in itself is sufficient motive. Mm. Ho, 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 ho! Oh, that's a good one! Huh? Do you really think I'm that incompetent? Even without that case, I was already in line to become the next chief. The resolution of SL9 merely sped up the inevitable a little. Is that true, Edgeworth? Yes. He was going to be made chief anyway. Gah! Be careful and point to that finger, or you might wind up being the one pointed at. So that means there's only one possible motivation for you to commit forgery. If you didn't do it for yourself, then you did it for someone else. That would be right. Don't be silly, Worthy. You know me better than that. There are only three people I look out for. Me, myself, and I. There. It's out in the open now. Hmm. Kind of selfish. Oh, gee. Would you mind if I change my testimony a little? By all means, uh, please do. I wouldn't be anyone's accomplice if there was nothing in it for me. Hold it. Nothing in it for you, huh? Nothing in it for you? Sorry, but the only person I care about is yours truly. That girl, not his little sister, was it? If you think I felt sorry for her, you'd better think again. You're right. You don't feel sorry for anyone. Be tough on crime and tough on people. That's how I was raised. You seem to be lax enough on yourself, though. Ho, ho! Ho! Oh, that's a good one, Worthy. Hmm. Could there have been something in it for him? Given his selfishness, would he have helped someone out? I don't think- he is clearly selfish in this matter. He's very insistent on covering up himself and not- Hmm. He doesn't really care who gets found out. So... I'll go now. Bah! I can't think of how it would help him! That means... He wouldn't have helped out anyone. Relax and take a deep breath, Mr. Wright. What? Try to think outside the box. After all, that's what you're good at, isn't it? Think outside the box? I never thought I'd hear him tell me that. Hmm. The question isn't who would the chief help, it's who would ask the chief for help. Hmm. If someone did that, he'd be sure to find a way to benefit from that person. Aha! It appears the defense has nothing more to say. Chief, would you please repeat your testimony from the beginning? Damn it. Let's go through that again, then. So... Edward's right. He might not have gone to help somebody, but if somebody asked him for help, he could find some way to benefit himself. So, you know? True! You might not help out anyone for their sake, but if it would benefit you, you might decide to assist someone. Mr. Wright! The appears you're positively determined to portray the Chief as a nice man who likes to lend people a hand! No, that's not what I mean! Damn it, Judge! Very well, then! Who is this person you believe Chief Scott may have helped forge evidence? Isn't it obvious? His, his second-in-command. His right-hand woman. Chief Prodescus, you little sky, the, the defendant? Yep. I believe it's quite obvious in light of the circumstances. Ah. And a sky fell victim to an unfortunate series of events. Who would want to help her more than her own sister, Lana? And as for Chief Gaunt, he would also have a reason to help Lana if she asked him to. That reason, of course, is self-profit. So, brother, what do you mean? After the SL9 incident was resolved, Moscow was appointed Chief Prosecutor of the Prosecutor's Office. The person who arranged this job change was you, Chief Gaunt. 
But, but, how would he profit from all this? He would be able to use the Chief Prosecutor as his puppet. Essentially, he would acquire a check's authority over all investigations. You mean to tell me that despite the Chief's formidable appearance, he plays with puppets? Judge! Oh, wait! You must mean puppet is that someone forced to do his bidding! Never mind! Thanks! Damn it! Admit it, Chief! Your system law is kind of forging evidence! Demote him to appoint our Chief Prosecutor so you can control her! Right on, my boy! You have quite an imagination! Let me ask you something! What? Do you have any proof of this? That I control Lana? For example, is I just why I've done such a thing? Lana, huh? She's keeping quiet to protect Emma. There's no way she testify against Gaunt. I'm afraid without any proof, this all amounts to nothing more than mere conjecture! Unless, that is also what happened in the incident. There's no connection! Which one would that be? Of course, I'm talking about the murder of Detective Bruce Goodman. The Chief Prosecutor has been acting strange throughout this entire trial, almost as if someone has been controlling her. Thank you, Edgeworth, for giving me a hand. Worthy, you better watch your tongue. I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Just what do you mean? What he means, Your Honor, is that Chief Gunn is involved in the murder of Detective Goodman. Not only that, the Chief is now making Lana take the rap to cover up his involvement. What? That's right, Your Honor. Order! 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 I said order! Mr. Root, you, you can't be serious! Huh? This, this is an affront to, to the highest ranking officer in our law enforcement agency! You got the chief of police of blackmail and murder? That's uh, 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 impossible! So you say, this crime has been all but impossible to me. Your Honor, I was merely reiterating what Mr. Edgeworth said in easier to understand language. <laughs> Throw him under the bus, there we go. It's too late, Mr. Wright. Huh? Damn it, there's no turning back for us now. Ah, it looks like he's the one who decided to go through with this. I'm following him with it. Can you prove this, Mr. Wright? That the chief of hard ranking officer of the law is involved in this murder? Mm, good question. Damn it. Regardless of his rank or title, Chief Gunn is just a man. The question is, is he a criminal? I believe the evidence will tell. Hmm. I see. All right, done. Let's see what Mr. Wright's got. It better be good. Show us this evidence that ties Chief Gunn to the murder of Detective Goodman. Hmm. Well, the ID card record. I see you went in there. This is the ID card list. Yes, the one that shows who entered the evidence room on the day of the murder, the crime. There was one idea on the list we couldn't determine the owner of yet yesterday. 7777777. Sorry, but there's no way you can prove that's my card number. It's your number. Haha! <laughs> what? How do you know that? The chief and the safe chief God's office requires a code to open. A seven-digit code. Seven digits? You don't mean? No, nope, I'm afraid so, Your Honor. The code was 7777777. The same as the remaining ID card number on that list. Chief Gunt, you enter the evidence room on the day of the crime. Ah, oh, yep, there we go. He's starting to get pissed. I'm reading him now. Order! Order! Chief Gunt, what do you have to say? No. Nothing! The defense is search of my office is in violation of regulations. And I would demand Mr. Wright be punished to the maximum extent of the law. But right now, this court demands an explanation from you about the use of this ID card. I think I know why, but... Chief Gunt, so you admit it? You entered the evidence room on the day of the crime? What about it? I'm chief of police. Whether it's the evidence room or the bathroom, what's the difference? I can go anywhere I want. Tell me, when you enter the room, were you alone? I always go to the bathroom alone, as I do with the evidence room. Detective Goodman wouldn't have happened to be with you that day, would he? Uh, of course not. Why would he be? I hadn't seen him in days. Oh no. You hadn't seen him in days? Chief God, I'm afraid you've just undone yourself. On that day, you had to have met with Detective Goodman. What do you mean? The trial's purpose is to determine all Sky's guilt. Hang on a second. No, it isn't, Your Honor. God's purpose is to determine the truth. If Chief Godman, the victim on the day of the crime, then we need to determine one thing. 
what transpired during that meeting. In that case, Mr. Wright, I'm going to have to ask you for evidence. Show us proof that the victim went to meet Chief Gout on the day of the crime. Hmm. He did have a lost item report. It could only be submitted to the Chief of Police, so... He at least thought about submitting it to him, right? Detective Goodman lost his ID card on the day of the crime. Or to be more accurate, Jake Marshall stole it. So Detective Goodman filled out a lost item report. He would have had to give that report to the Chief of Police. Yet you are in possession of the report, which means you can't be sure if he filed it. Well, he filed it. How do I know, you ask? Because he needs to enter the evidence room that day. He made to? Yes, to transfer the evidence out. Oh! Detective Goodman took the form to you, Chief Gaunt. Then, you accompanied the detective to the evidence room. I accompanied him? Yeah. There's no other way the murderer and Detective Goodman couldn't, could have entered the room. Did I really just directly say- Hold on, let me guess what you're going to say next. I, the Chief of Police, murdered poor Goodman. I believe that. Exactly. But wait, the Chief didn't necessarily need to accompany him to the evidence room. He could have just lent him his ID card. Yes, now that you mention it, I believe I might have done something of the sort. Objection! But, don't be ridiculous. Sorry, but that's not possible. According to the record, your card was only used once. Yet you showed us your ID card earlier. If you had really lent it to Detective Goodman, it would have been found on his body. No! Aha! Uh -huh. Looks like we found who the true culprit really is. Chief Gaunt, you, you did it! Oh boy. The murder was most likely a spur of the moment crime for no one in their right mind would choose the police department as a place to commit murder. In their right mind. After the murder, he contacted Lana at the prosecutor's office. Why? To dispose of Detective Goodman's body, of course. Objection. Damn it! You're forgetting, Mr. Wright. What am I forgetting? That the victim's body was discovered in the prosecutor's office is a parking lot. How did he manage to move it there? I was at the police department the entire day, you know. And everyone's aware that Lana stayed at the prosecutor's office after the ceremony. No one except me, it seems. Still, you're the chief of police. You have an entire police force at your disposal. Oh, so you think I just ordered an officer to do it? Hey, you! Take us your dead body over the prosecutor's office! I don't think so. Chief Gunn, you left all the evidence we need to prove how you moved the body to the prosecutor's office. And all this time, I thought it was a useless clue just taking up space. How will the chief have moved the body? Mr. Wright, show us this evidence! To move the victim's body, Chief Gunn used this. There's something we've been given that's been lying around. Seeing as the lock of the trunk was busted, it's clear he's a screwdriver to put it in there. And this is how he moved Detective Goodman's body! What's that? A screwdriver? Well, what does that have to do with the case? Mr. Edgeworth, think back to the day of the crime. What is the screwdriver doing here? It's here because... Uh, uh! Right. I, I was asked to go, by Chief Gaunt, no less. He told me he wanted me to keep it here in the prosecutor's office. In any case, on the day of the stabbings, I brought this back here. So he managed to get into the trunk and put the body in there. After the ceremony ended that day, I didn't plan to return to the prosecutor's office. But you did! Because Chief Gaunt asked you to! You mean I... I... The body was found in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car. I think it's obvious what happened. The body was moved by that car! Oh, Edgeworth! Getting used again! Detective Gaunt's body was carried in the trunk of Mr. Edgeworth's car! Yes. Unless, of course, you have another explanation, Chief. Why else would you have asked Mr. Edgeworth to transfer evidence from a closed case? There's only one plausible explanation. To transfer the body to your accomplice, Miss Lana Sky. And just like that, we're starting to really get him on the hook. Order! 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 What's going on here? Is there no room for rebuttal to the defense's outrageous accusations? Think back to the photograph Miss Starr took at the prosecutor's office. That photo. This is not a photo of the body being stuffed in the trunk to be taken away. It was exactly the opposite. It is a photo of the body being taken from the trunk. Chief Gaunt, please say something! I believe... Your time's up. My time's up? 
Sorry, Righto, but I'm having lunch with the District Attorney General after this. We have to get going if we're to make it in time for the early bird special. Objection. Don't you dare walk out! But the cross-examination isn't finished yet! Remember what I told you earlier? The police chief has all kinds of weapons at his disposal. Weapons? Like the right to refuse to testify. I'm invoking that right now. What? That is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. Objection. That's right. So you're going to just run away after all this? Run away? Don't make me laugh, Worthy. I stabbed old Goodman. That's what you're saying, right? But if you had any conclusive evidence, you would have presented it by now. Well, I... You think I had long disposed of the body? If so, then show your proof and get it over with. Hmm. I'll say it again, Mr. Wright. David Gunn is the current chief of police. This court will not tolerate any accusations against him without concrete proof. Well, Mr. Wright? Y your Honor? Do you have any concrete proof? Prove that Chief Gunn murdered Detective Goodman and made Mr. Scott dispose of his body? Any concrete proof? Mm. That's the thing. It would have to be on this weapon then. Maybe. But then again, I don't know. That might be jumping the gun a bit. I mean, it's true Goodman must have gotten in there if he opened the locker at some point, but I don't know. I don't think I have any proof at the moment. Nothing that's sure that's assuring that he did it. So you're showing evidence I'm not even sure of myself. No, Your Honor. At present I have no conclusive evidence. Hmm. <laughs> See, OG. In that case, the court is supposed to penalize you for your allegations against the chief. What? Here's a tip. Never gamble what you can't afford to lose, Righto. It seems that Lady Luck was on my side again today. Okay, OG, I'll leave the rest to you. Oh dear. Damn it! Ah, uh, I'm more to own it, Mr. Wright. This is an affront to a state officer in our nation's law enforcement agency. Whoa! Objection! Oh! Edgeworth! Lady Luck, huh? Hmm? Maybe we should have a word with her. Mr. Edgeworth, what do you mean? There's one lady who knows the real truth behind this trial. We haven't yet had the honor of hearing her testimony. Well, he knows the truth. Another witness! In the absence of conclusive evidence, the only other method of proof is testimony. But Chief Gunn has invoked his right to refuse to testify! There's still someone else. One more witness who can answer all the questions raised in this trial. Someone right in this very room. Mr. Edgeworth, who is this person? Hmm. Why are you asking me, Your Honor? Have you forgotten? The defense is the one calling witnesses today. Uh, Mr. Wright, does such a witness exist? She may not be willing to tell the truth, but we can't just stop now. Yes, Your Honor. The defense calls for it. Oh, man, I barely escaped that one. He could have gotten me done for. The defendant, Miss Lois Sky! She was in the underground parking lot at 5.15 p.m. on February 21. Her task? To dispose of the victim's body. That's my belief. In accordance with a certain someone's orders. Hmm, Mr. Edgeworth! The prosecution has no objections, Your Honor. Very well! The court will now take its final recess for the day! In 15 minutes, we will reconvene to hear the defendant's testimony! This court is now in re- Hold on! Huh? Chief Gunt! I thought you were going to eat! Listen good, Lana! Oh no, he's talking to Lana! I don't think you need me to tell you this, but if you accept Mr. Wright's claims, there will be terrible consequences. Oh no, he's threatening her now. That's right. Your sister will be found guilty for Neil Marshall's murder. Ah, this isn't good. Of course, you never support such outrageous claims anyway, right? Just something to think about. All right then, I've got a lunch date to meet. A dick bag. Okay. If there are any further objections, uh, this court is now in recess! Ugh! Oh, it's... It's obvious that he's controlling her! It's obvious! Yet, can't do anything! Ah! Looks like we managed to stay in the game. Yeah, thanks for your help, Edgeworth. Alright. Oh, Gumshoe! The Chief! 
He's nothing else, eh, pals? Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> I'm not a detective anymore. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, uh, don't worry. I've already decided where to work now. At your office. My office? Sure. I'll take the place of that top nine girl you used to work with. What do you mean? Maya? Oh, oh no, trouble! Ah! I'm kidding. <laughs> Still, looks like we're all out of moves now. Chief God's done it again. How is it he always gets the upper hand? It's not fair he has the right to refuse to testify. <laughs> Still no doubt, right? Remember what the judge said. Yeah. But Chief, this is not a right to be casually invoked. There are certain risks to be considered. So there is something we can do. Risks? What did he mean by that? It's simple. If the Chief refuses to testify, the opposite also holds true. You mean he forfeits his right to say anything, too? Oh! Hey, Emma, why are you coming sound like your sister? Emma, are you okay? Yeah, when I came to, I was in the medical office. I've been listening to the trial from the gallery. So she heard everything that's been going on. Um, Emma, I'm sorry for what I said before. No, don't be. It was the truth. You know, it's funny. I almost feel somehow relieved. Relieved? Yeah, now I don't know what really happened. Back on all this time, my sister was being blackmailed by a terrible man. But she did it all just to protect me. Ever since her appointment as chief prosecutor, everyone who knew her said she changed. Perhaps it was easier that way for her. What do you mean? What do you think I mean to follow Chief God's orders? She must have shut herself up deep inside and forced herself to do anything and everything the chief told her to do. That must be why she became so cold. It was all my fault. It's all because I, I murdered Mr. Marshall. Hey, don't go blame yourself now. You want to blame anyone, blame society, pal. Thanks. Chief God may be able to fool everyone else with his forgery, but he can't fool my memory. I remember now. I knocked Mr. Marshall into that armor. I... I see. Well, we better get back. It's time for the final act. Emma, why don't you wait here? No, I'm going with you. Huh? I want to be there when Lana tells the truth. Let's go, right? It's time to end this. That it is. Which we will do in the finale next time. Ha <laughs> ha. So we finally come down to it. We managed to get the chief of police as an obvious suspect. Now all that's left is get Lana to talk to show her involvement. If we can prove that, we win. So come back next time and we'll be talking to Lana about this incident and the incident from two years ago. And then we'll finally get Chief Cut declared guilty. In the only three-part trial of this game, because, oh boy, this is a long one. But, now we're finally getting to the heart of the matter. It's time to put a clear end to it. I mean, come on! He's got to be guilty, right? Look at him. He's old. He has plenty of experience covering things up, I'm pretty sure already.